There's, there's really, um, there's only one easy way to do this, and so it's going to be in, in sections, and it's going to be a summary, because uh, just one of these, uh, one of these uh, subjects, or you pick one person I'm going to talk about, it would be a whole week of material that I have. Okay, so just understand, if we start picking out subjects, and we just talk about an incident, or uh, an area or something like that would take a week. But then if you start talking about the people involved, that would take a long time too as well to, to, to discuss things. So co this is coffee talk, coffee, coffee with Kevin. But um, it's starting to migrate toward uh, some of these issues that, that the church is just not, uh, for whatever reason, is not going to address them. And, and um, a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, the, like the pre-programmed frame of mind that we have that's been given to us. And I tried to very gently uh, steer over the last seven years, people very gently just talking very carefully um, and um, staying, staying out of jail. And I just be, but see now that I could, I, I have to still be very careful because these individuals that I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention, if I go too far, they're gonna, they're gonna call me and say, don't ever talk about that again. They're, they would do that to anybody because if you notice, I'm going to mention these things so you can watch the interviews yourself. But these are these are credible people. Uh, the, these aren't. This isn't somebody that was out, you know, duck hunting, you know, smoking marijuana. Not that that's wrong. I guess I can't say anything anymore. <laughs> I guess I don't know. I guess you're allowed to do that now. You know, just don't drive my airplane. You know. But anyway, uh, I'm, I get you to laugh because these, th this ministry is not, um, it, it's, not an, it's not always easy, the messages and things like that, because we're so behind where, where we should be well informed about things. And so there's a couple of things I want to point out to you that, that will help you to start a thinking process. It took me um, 30, 40 years uh, <coughs> you know, thousands and thousands of hours of study on these subjects. And that includes interviews with government officials and uh, people that work on these projects. Uh, there's some of them that, are, that, that uh, don't exist anymore. They have completely erased them. They don't, they don't exist. And they were my friends. I cannot find them. There's no birth certificate. There's nothing. And they were for the government. So I'm going to let other people speak, so to speak, in, the, in these things, because now that these best-selling books and these Pulitzer Prize winners, Nobel Peace Prize winners, they, they're, they're doing the research and they're credible. And since these books have come out, now I can speak freely because I could just blame them. But these things have to be spoken because um, I'm telling you, the enemy relies on our ignorance. Wow. And if it involves the government, then so be it. That's the way it is. It's, so the... the the, the, the people that I have dealt with, they, they rely on it, it, the ignorance of the people so that they don't go too far with something. And so, I mean, you know, if those of you who are in the intelligence field that are here to listen to me, you know, because you were sent, you know, I, you could come up and talk if you want, you know. But they're not. They're going to sit back there and they're just going to listen to me to see what I say. But they monitor everything I say. But I'm just, I'm just Captain Kevin. I'm not a minister. You know, I just want to help people. And if it means not being a minister, then that's the way it's going to be. And now what I'm saying is, is that we get all these labels and then the, if something goes wrong and we start getting off, I would rather help people than have a title. So, so you know, in other words, like Jesus, Jesus said, there's only one that's good. You know, they said, oh, you're, you know, he told, they called him good. You know, well, of course he's the son of God, but he said, no, there's only one that's good. Why would he say that? Because he was doing exactly what he's told me to do at Warrior Notes, is we don't have any heroes. We're all heroes, you know. Uh, okay, so there are some people that have really, um, uh, I want you to go watch, you're going to fall in love with these people. <laughs> Annie Jacobson is one. Oh my God, I just fall in love with her. I, I want to meet her. Uh, she, none of these people claim to be Christians. But they have written some best-selling books and they have done the homework. And the stuff that they went through and are going through, all of these people, they're quality people. Another one is uh, Professor Gary Nolan, 
who is one of my favorite people. It just happened over Christmas, but uh, Professor um, Gary, he's, if you, if you look him up, he is the head immunologist at Stanford. And he's up for uh, up, you know, one of the prizes you know, from the government. And he's risking that now because he's coming out and saying that the government is deceiving and hiding things from us. And you can imagine if he's a head immunologist, but he's, he's talking about, um, he talks about how he's approached by the intelligence fields to, to, to use his equipment to analyze stuff. And so he talks about this and then he realized, you know, what are they, what are you, what are you doing? And so you, you need to listen to him. You're not going to hear this, you know, except for uh, maybe a couple of us. Uh, I don't know anyone else's talk. I mean, once I tell you the stories, you're going to, you're going to be shocked. You're going to need, you're going to need to take a break. But I'm not going to reveal all the names and all the things because I don't want the algorithms to, to uh, be flagged on me. And if you notice, I talk in code in random and in circles all the time. I repeat stuff because they take it out. But hopefully the second time I say it, they don't take it out. If you notice, they take out everything like this. There'll be all kinds of glitches. They literally live can take out a whole section. So they have the technology to do that, but they, they can't heal my knee. And they can't keep me from, from the disease of the week. But they, they can live stream me and take out whole sections of keywords. That's the technology we have. There's a six second lag in the live stream. And in that six seconds, they can even change what I said. And they have, they've changed. It's just amazing. I look, I look at the technology that's available that I know, and I realize that they have tapped into other realms. And so this morning, I just want to talk to you about seeing into the unseen realms and how the spirit of the Lord has given us the ability to know things around us that are there, but we just can't see them physically. And there are times where for instance, you, just to give you an example of where I'm going with this, you could feel irritated, but when, what happens is, is that if you start to fall asleep and you get into that halfway point, you'll hear something screaming and yelling at you. And that was the source of the irritation. It was a demon that was cursing you. Now, I've had this happen so many times. And that's why like, uh, some of you, like if I, if I walk down the aisle, you'll feel, some sort, you'll feel the freedom of the fact that just me personally, not that I went to heaven or that I'm some big guy or anything. I want to be the least in the kingdom because I'm going to be the greatest. But you'll feel a freedom. What that is, is anybody that, that understands what I'm saying this morning and walks in that reality is going to have a a sense of freedom around them. It's not just for the apostle, you know, you know, like how we place it on the Pope. I don't want the Pope touching me. And I'd be fine. And I, I've been to the Vatican. In fact, the right hand man of, of the Pope, I was at his house and had spaghetti, the real stuff. <laughs> he wanted, he had heard of me. He wanted to hear my testimony. So he works at the Vatican, but his house is right beside it. And that's where we went and we had dinner and he sat there and wept. And he said, the whole Catholic church is open to you. Anything you want, I'll get you in. But when I was there, I didn't, I didn't, I feel the power of God here. I don't, I didn't feel it there. Not in his house I did, but not he was the head of the charismatic renewal movement for the Catholic church in the world, but just, you know, a block down the road or whatever. I mean, I, and it's not someplace I want to sit and study at the Vatican. <laughs> so there's things that are going on and you sense them, but you can't define them. Okay. So the, the government totally, totally relies on you staying there and the religious spirit the religious spirit that was tied through the pharisees to the roman government i'm trying to show you how it will be in the end times how it is right now it's it doesn't change it's it's an invasion of a foreign government into our government and then they will use the church 
or like in the Pharisees, the temple, they, they didn't get rid of the religion. If you read the Romans thought on this, they said, no, we're not going to get rid of the religion. This will keep everything intact. We'll let them do it. They'll, the Pharisees will answer to us, but we'll let them manage the people. What happened was, is when Jesus started to stir it up, they, it appeared that they didn't have control anymore of the people. And so that God, they felt fear, remember? And they said, if we don't kill this guy, Rome's going to come in and take, our, take this away from us. Well, they already had. <laughs> So that's how it works. Satan will use the government and the religion. So what happens in the last days? There is a antichrist, but there's what? A false, pro there's a prophet, right? You get it? That's what happened with Nimrod and Babylon, that he's the culprit of all this stuff. So all this stuff we're talking about is Nimrod. He was one of these hybrid uh, entities. He was a Hagaborum in Hebrew, it says, which is one of the hybrids. Okay, so he was building these towers that could reach the heavens, but it, the word is not reach. The word is contact the heavens. See what I mean? That's why you all have to study. So what that those temples, those pyramids and those things that are built they had a purpose that, that tapped them into the pre-flood. And the laws and everything that, that started to deteriorate, where we had four atmospheres, where the magnetic field of the earth was a lot stronger than it is now. Everything was a lot stronger. You were a lot stronger. You didn't have to breathe. You could breathe every couple minutes if you wanted to. The oxygen was so rich here. You could lift things heavier than you because of the way the magnetic field was. So if you, if you take all this data and you can study this yourself, if you wanna save, I have about 2000 hours of study with Chuck Missler and he worked for the Department of Defense and became a Christian and became a minister. And um, I, I've listened to everything he's ever put out. But I never, for the last seven years, you don't know that part of me because I didn't wanna go there because it wasn't worth it to be flagged. But now this information is gonna become so important to you so that you can somehow digest and get through the days that are ahead so that you're not deceived like the very elect could be deceived if that were possible because that's what this is. And these are government officials that already know the plan. So I'm not saying anything that someone else hasn't said. And that's why I'm, gonna t I'm talking very slow and I'm going to be careful what I say because there are things that even these people will not, they, 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 they whispered it, but I'm not to say it because they haven't said it. So I want to tell you that the testimonies you're hearing, the whistleblowers and the things that they're saying, some of these, some, at least one of these individuals, they're only telling 20%. And if you notice any in interviews with this particular person I'm gonna talk about, he starts to choke and it's, he had already told Joe Rogan that he said, if you ask me about this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit there and stay silent. I am not gonna answer you. And, and what happened that I knew, I, when it happened, I was, I was privy to this when it happened and I've held it for 30 years. So he still hasn't said everything that I was told. <laughs> Get it? Okay, so imagine, imagine this so that you can frame your mind because you all have your stories. You could come up here too. But I need to help you to digest when these things happen because it's going to start being more prevalent. Okay, so now you've got credible people, professors, that are world known. And I just mentioned two people, Annie Jacobson's amazing. She found one of Hitler's uh, grandchildren, I think, got all the papers for Project Paperclip, 
which was all this technology that Hitler had got through opening portals and they had factories. And I have the photos. You, you can get the photos and everything. And they take them down and you get more. But the troops, when they went in there, the reason that they got, went in there is because they were building, they were building craft that were way beyond. I mean, they had the, the, uh, the ME-262, which at the end of the war, the, our pilots were flying P-51s, so the prop planes. And they were like the hot, uh, the hot rods, you know. And, and then the uh, P-38 was a twin engine. It was just a hot rod. It would actually, my grandfather said, it would actually break the speed of sound in a dive. We had them crash. You know, he's, so my grandfather's telling me all these things. He said, but then one day, this thing flew by it like twice, almost three times uh, what a P-51 was flying. And it, it didn't have any propellers. It was, it was a ME-262. It was a jet airplane. They had the first jet. So when they... Just to make it really short, because you know, I'll get into it more and more in all the coffee talks over, you know, as I stay alive and stay out of jail. But what happened was, as you can see the photos, when they went in, when American troops went in, they wanted to get the, all of those um, scientists. So Project Paperclip, there was 1,500 of them. And this is all you can read is, and I, I, I would just ask you to go ahead and watch the YouTube videos to get yourself in a frame of mind with all these people. Because these people, they, they, these people are, are very credible people. They, they don't have any agenda. Like Gary Nolan, I mean, I can't wait to have lunch with him. All these people, I, I, I mean, that's, I don't want to have, I don't have a lunch with, with, with you know, your favorite TV preacher. I've already done that. <laughs> what I want is I want real people that know stuff and are saying, they're all saying the government has been hiding this for, for 50, well, he says 70 years. He said, I've seen the technology that they got from these, these craft that, that were crashed. So you got to stop saying that isn't true. You got to stop that first because that's already happened. I know the individuals. I know the people. They were in my church. They said that cows won't even go near that crash site in Roswell. The cows don't even go near that spot to this day. He said it really happened. They came in and threatened my, my relatives, my uncle. He said, I, we had the pieces at our house. He said, it, it, it wasn't from this world. He said that the things that were in there, they were from this world. So you got to like settle it. If you're going to go, if you're going to uh, be ready for what's going to happen in the next, probably just two or three years, they're going to try to offset what they're doing illegally in the government. The, the, it's, a, it's a mob mentality. They're going to offset it to get your attention away from it so that you don't do anything about this. So that's why they're, they're releasing stuff. But I want you to know that some of the people that are whistleblowing are part of the intelligence agency because that's what they do. So if you have like a panel, like a, a Christian, there's Christian ministers and they have a panel of four people that they're their sources. One in four of those people is a CIA agent. And I've told them this. I go, you got to infiltrate. You don't take any information from this person because they were sent to give, get you just a little off so they can discredit you. Mm. Did everybody understand what I'm saying? Can I go on? Yes. If you see men in black, please let me know. <laughs> no. Okay. So this is how it works. No. This is not something I think. This is something I know. Right. Okay, everything I'm telling you, I just been protecting people. Okay, but a lot of these people don't exist anymore. You can't find them. And they were my friends. And they, they explained everything to me. But this was like 30, 30 years ago. So now it's coming out. So what is it that the government and the scientists have found Okay, if you look at what has been taken away from our history and, and the archaeological findings, it's the clue. If you look, the narrative of what was really going on in all of the different civilizations, 
It's been, it's been taken out. So the Smithsonian was that, that uh, avenue. That, it was the, they were the ones that would come in. And so you have all these paper clippings. I have them of, of all these farmers in the United States that found 15, 20, and 30 foot bones on their property. The Smithsonian comes in and tags them. They have a trace number that you can see in the photograph. And the farmer, you can see that the, just this bone right here is bigger than the farmer. And they take it away. And then when somebody starts to inquire, it doesn't exist. And then people on the inside said, well, they took those things and destroyed them. Okay, so for time's sake, because I want to go a couple different subjects this morning, I'm going to go really fast forward just to kind of get you so that you can go do this yourself. And then you can talk to the men in black instead of me. So, but this is, I'm just telling you right now, if you don't get this now, you're going to have to deal with it later, but it's going to be harder to deal with it later because it's going to be a lot of shocking information. And you're going to have to know that the narrative is going to be adjusted so that you d develop a certain perception that's false. Was that too much? Can I say, do you need to, I just say it again? So they, they, the, the intelligence agencies will, will build the narrative before they do anything. So they already know what they're going to release. So for instance, there was a, a time where, um, while I was at, at Southwest Airlines, I, I, uh, I heard that there was a satellite agency that had gotten a photo from the Russians of an overfly over Groom Lake, which doesn't exist, you know? So I went and found that photo and then they took it down and I can't find it now. But the aircraft that was on the ramp from space, you could see it right there at Groom Lake. Um, that aircraft was something that had flown underneath us one day when we were at Southwest Airlines and um, had, had uh, gone at least two or three times as fast as us and had no exhaust. It, it was uh, what, what uh, you would, it was just very much, it was the exact model that you see in Top Gun with Tom Cruise, the Aurora project, which is the SR-72. But um, it was much larger. The, the real one is a lot larger, has a lot more wing area. And, and I, we all got to see it. But when we asked what it was, they, 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 they they said, we don't have anything on the screen. I'm like, it just almost hit us, you know, and went up and disappeared into space. I mean, we watched it go up without it. It's a beautiful airplane. Now, all of us wanted to fly it. I mean, we, we didn't think it was, but that was in this area that, that I want to talk to you about. We were near that area. So this technology exists and it's about 30 years ahead. I know individuals who have flown these airplanes, who have seen these things, who have worked out there, okay, before it even existed. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute and just really consider what I'm doing here because I don't, I want warriorness to go on forever, you know. But a lot of these people are dead. So I'm not going to mention their names, but they're friends, okay? And one of them, in 19, uh, I'd, it was in the uh, beginning of 89, 1989, and uh, a certain person was a friend of mine who was, a, was one of the bosses at Southwest Airlines. Um, he was a station, like a station manager, and I saw him all the time because I was flying all the time. And... Um, he pulled me aside because um, what had happened was I was flying just little Cessnas to get my hours back then. And I would have all these lights in my way. In the Phoenix area is just saturated with all this stuff. We would see these lights all the time, Kathy and I. And um, I mean, bizarre stuff, you know. So these things were getting in the way. But I was usually flying by myself because I would fly all the time. And I would ask the controllers, you know, to have an off, some sort of heading away from them. And 
they, they would want to know why. And I would say, well, just look on your screen. There's at least 17 or 18 lights over South Mountain right now. And they're darting like cut several miles in a fraction of a second and repositioning themselves. And they go, we, we don't have anything up there. You're the only one right now, except for, you know, you know, America West is coming in from Buckeye and, you know, you got all this stuff going on. And I go, well, just look out your window. <laughs> and they did. They go, do you want to report this? And I'm like, yeah, am I stupid? Yeah, I know what's going to happen if I report this, you know. Okay, so, so then I was flying with another person who I could name it, I'm not, but uh, they're still with Southwest as a flight attendant. I, it happened again to us, and I said, do you see that? And he goes, yeah. I go, so I'm not crazy. He goes, no. He goes, what? I go, what is it? He goes, I have no idea. So how it just happened over the Gulf just uh, last year. I was flying, it was just me and Kathy and a co-pilot and I was flying over the Gulf to go home after, after a, over, like a, one of these things. And um, there was like 30, 30 of those lights. There's nobody out there. Now you'd think, oh, those are oil rigs. It's like, no, these are flying and they're in formation and then they break away and they're moving around. And they said, you're the only one up there. And I asked the first, who was, who was chief pilot for American for four, he was 40 year captain at American Airlines, 40 years chief pilot. I said, he goes, oh yeah, I see it. I go, he goes, I don't know. So they don't show up on radar. So, see, so on our radar, it takes each one of those and it gives us information about them. None of them, none of them registered. So we can see them. So you have to admit that there are realms where something's there, but you don't see it or, or something, it, you can see something, but it's not there. If that makes sense, it probably doesn't, but it will by the end of this. Okay. So this person, this, this supervisor pulled me aside because I was talking about this to him. He goes, he teared up and I, I'm, he's a really good guy and I hope he's still alive. But he, he pulled me aside and he, he started to tear up. And this guy's not like that. I mean, this guy doesn't show any emotions. This guy was visibly shaken. He goes, um, he said, well, I want to tell you what's going on right now. He said, I, my best friend work, works out at that military installation and he is at my apartment hiding right now because he was out there working and he, he realized some of the stuff that he was working on was not from here. And he said, he, he started to spill the beans with me. So he, he, he gave me drawings and um, he, he explained everything to me. And then, you know, he didn't want me to meet Bob Lazar because they were ki trying to kill him. So he was hiding him. He said, there's a bullet hole in my car where they, they pulled up to try to kill him. And he's hiding right now. So he explained all this to me, which I have not seen Bob in any of these explain. So he told him and then I got told. And then um, he decided to go to George Knapp and go in Las Vegas and just put it out in the air to save his life. So what they did was he blocked his face out at first and he spilled the beans. And then they called him, my friend said, and said, you know what we're going to do to you now? You gave our, the position, you gave all this technology you're done, okay? So they, that's what happened. Okay, this, he will tell you this in the interviews. I'm not telling you anything. What I'm not gonna tell you is what was on the napkin, the drawings and stuff, but he did make a drawing. And um, so if I could have Pastor Mike, um, I have a sign, where's Pastor Mike? There he is, okay. No, this, so, so this is my sign from Area 51. So it's, it says, use of deadly force, is authorized. So what, what you hiding in there, you know? Okay, so anyway. All right, so this is from Bob. This is from Bob Lazar, signed by him. And this is what he worked on. 
Okay, what's interesting is, is in, that, in those, in those uh, mountains in Germany where they got von Braun and they brought all those scientists over to Los Alamos and Edwards Air Force Base was in Muroc at the time. And then eventually Area 51, they brought all the scientists in. Now you can see these plans because if you look, if they haven't, they take them down, but then, but the army, they found these plans and these ships inside those mountains in Germany. This is not hearsay. Just go ahead and read Annie Jacobson's, Jacobson's book. Let's start with the interview with her and Joe Rogan. This woman has, has risked her life. She, it was a bestseller. In New York Times bestseller. It's all documented, okay? So he worked on this. They had nine of them that they had found. Some of them were damaged. So... I let it go for a month or two, and then I saw him again. So we're friends, you know, we've been friends for a couple of years, this, this man who's housing this guy. So after they come out with it, when I approach him and say, listen, I still have that napkin, you know, and you explained all this, and I, I said, I just want you to know that I know all this stuff. I understand it from my science background that this is it, this is the missing key, but I can understand why this is classified. So I understand why it wouldn't be a good idea for him to talk about this particular thing because this is the game changer that connects us physically with the other realm so that you can go back and forth like, like uh, Enoch did. Okay, so the spirit of God wants to do that. But if you notice, God is really, is this too much? Okay, so God, God was very strict about us not um, tracking the stars to predict the future or to inquire of familiar spirits. And, the, you know, if you look, he is not wanting us to do certain things to tap into those because it is another way. It's not the gate, but you can get in. So everything is placed in a certain order. So positions and things, the fallen, the fallen ones knew that the order was there. So when they detached themselves from God, they had to somehow have reference points so that they can tell the times and the seasons because they did not get their briefings from God anymore. So they, it was random. They had to, but they saw order. They knew that God had put order in the positions of the stars and so Nimrod became deified as Marduk, who then became the god of Mars. And his wife was Ishtar, Athena, but then it be, she became Venus. They were deified as gods. And of course, you know, we know that when God did what he did, he said, if we don't stop them, they're going to be able to do what they intended to. They had to stop them. Okay, that's how powerful this can be. That's why you're not supposed to do this. You're supposed to allow the spirit to take you there and do these things. Is this clear? Yes. Is everybody okay? Yes. Do you need a snack or do you need like a... Okay, I know this is like a... This is like a, a, a I can't say crash course because I'm a pilot now. I can't say crash, you know, but... <laughs> You know, I mean, it's really bad to go to training for jet training and call it a crash course, you know, because it's, but um, essentially I'm just giving you enough tools so that you can work your way into the knowledge of what I know that I, I found and you can do it in a way where it's already out there and, but you're going to have to dig and you have to listen to these interviews, but I just I want you to give you a couple names that these people, you know, are proven because, you know, I, they erased they erased Bob from um, everywhere he, even his high school, and they took his birth certificate literally out of his house. So he does not exist, but yet he was able, because he worked for the Navy, he had a, a, a check stub. So he worked for Naval Intelligence, and so he had a check stub so that, that all these places, MIT, all these places said he didn't exist, but he had like a yearbook with his picture in it, you know. 
And um, so, you know, can I go on? You know, like, so other words, like it ends up that this guy, so just fast forward, cause you can get all this. It's gonna take all day if I, if I stay on, I still have three other subjects to talk about this morning. This is just one, one of them, okay. The, the bottom line was, is when I approached this guy who told me all this and, and, and eventually I was gonna meet this, this Bob Lazar, uh, he acted as though he didn't know me, my friend. And he was very nervous and he was teary-eyed and he, he, he remained that way the rest of the time that I knew him. He, would, he said, every time I was asked, so um, what's the update? What's the update on S4 and Area 51 guy, you know? And he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I go, you, come on. He goes, no, I'm serious. I don't even know what you're talking about. And he was mad. And he had been threatened. So now when I went to look for him, and because I know he worked for Southwest, he does not exist. You cannot find that he, his birth or his death. You cannot find anything about him. The only thing is the same thing. I found a periodical from, um, from Southwest Airlines. They had taken his picture out of it, but they still mentioned his name. So I know that uh, this guy existed, you know, but they took everything away. He does not exist anymore. Okay, he told me that there was a substance, that the key thing, that the key stickler here is, and I only say a certain amount about this and then I, I'll, I can't say anymore because this guy, Bob, will not say anything about it because it is, it is the game changer and you will get an, you're gonna get a visit if you start to go too close with this. But I have, I actually have, um, he, he also made, this is actually the replica of what was used um, in the craft, and um, it's element 115. And, um, you know, no, normally you would have like a certain amount of electrons and protons in, in a periodical chart. But if you look, you know, we're, we're used to like, he told me, he said, when I, when I held this, he said, uh, this had like, where you'd have like eight, 10, maybe 12, 16. This has like 32 Electro, these, this is like, this is so dense, so mass, so much mass that it creates its own gravitational field and makes anything, anything weightless. And plus it had amplifiers. Uh, he described the whole, the whole system on how it works. And I go, this is, in, this is ingenious. I go, but where do you get this? He said, it didn't come from here. Okay, so... Everything else is conjecture. So just so you know, the narrative is, is that, well, this became from an alien race. Okay. That's what they say. Okay. But the, but the, the, the key that I want to say is this was in 1989 that he told me about element 115, which doesn't exist. But if you look on a periodical chart now, it exists. But what they did was they said it was a Russian scientist that found it and it only lasted, it was only stable for four seconds. But this is, a, this, iso, this is a stable isotope. So this doesn't decay at all. It doesn't decay at all. So that's how with this inside, he said he would put this into a, a triangle shaped uh, uh, apparatus in the center. They put it in and, and it would spool up. The whole craft would become its own environment. And you, it, you didn't know, you could go as fast or as slow as you wanted, but inside you would not feel any G's. And the stuff that he told me, I'm not going to repeat because this guy has not. But if I hear him say it, then I will tell you. But essentially what happened was, is that I know what happened. So don't listen to the alien narrative. But this is from, this, this is from a, a binary star system. So they, they told him it was Zeta Reticuli which is a twin sun. So with a two suns, it would be a stronger, a stronger environment of gravity. So all the material would be otherworldly if it was brought to the earth. Do you get that? Okay, so if you have something where you have a binary star system, everything would be way above anything that we have on the earth. So just to show you that I'm not crazy, but I know you know I'm not, but you cannot make gold. So we have gold on the earth, but but what is the one element that's right below gold that if you upped the, upped the elements, uh, up the, combined it so that you have um, a stronger bond, 
more, more of these electrons, more, a, more, a stronger one, you would, you would, it would be lead. Lead is right a notch below gold. So what they do is it's like it would be, you know, what you do is you just, you just merge to get those extra electrons. Then you can make gold, but we can't do it because the bond is not here on the earth. It will not, it will not stay. So what, whatever gold we have is all we have. So that's why God said the gold is mine. <laughs> but do you understand that we're lo- God locked it out so that we can't like on the periodical chart turn lead into gold. It would just be upping it. Does everybody follow it or is this too much? I know you guys are thinking, man, I, I can count how many wieners are in a package and how many buns are in a package. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, and that's, that was my question. Why, are, why, why can't I get a congruent package of buns to match the, the amount of hot dogs in a, in a package? You say you get eight buns and 10 hot dogs. I mean, I just talk to anyway, this one of those mysteries I'm going to ask Jesus when I get, okay, so. So this is the idea is that Jesus Christ, when he was introduced to this realm, he was preexistent. You got to remember that Jesus wasn't in a manger for, you know, first he was on a throne first. He was preexistent. So he was ruling and reigning before anything was made. Everything that was made, it says was made through him, right? Okay. Okay. So he's preexistent. Okay, you got to remember, think of it, think of that like this. Okay, so you think of Jesus Christ introducing himself to us, walking on the earth. There was nothing normal about him. I mean, except, you know, he was human, but he didn't sin. But, but he did, he did uh, roll his eyes at his, at his mom. You know, when she said, just, you know, do whatever he says. You know, mom, it's not my time. But you knew that something had happened because he called her woman. He goes, that... He, Woman, it's not my time. He didn't say mom, you know. That should have been her clue, you know. There's a new sheriff in town, you know. Okay, so when Jesus came in, he was natural. He didn't have to change anything, right? But he became a servant. It says he laid aside his deity. He laid it aside and considered being equal with God as nothing or something that couldn't be comprehended and became a servant, right? Okay, but in that servanthood, he was able to do miracles. Is everybody follow me? Yeah. That's why the church isn't doing the miracles. It's because they don't have that same mind that was in Christ. He laid aside everything and became a servant so that the Father could manifest himself through him, even though he, Jesus was God. Okay, so when he introduces himself, himself to us, John in chapter one of John and then first John, it says that he walked among us. God became flesh and walked among us and we beheld his glory and, and we could touch and feel him. But he was, he was, uh, he was a son of God in the flesh. You got to remember this is that it, he was supernatural because he was preexistent and he came to a fallen world. So we should have been, Adam and Eve would have said, this is normal when, when God showed up, right? He just, they just walked with him. They weren't like, you know, Eve didn't ask Adam, you know, God's coming. Does this make me look fat? You know, or should I, <laughs> you know, what color are you going to wear today? You know, you know, should, you know, should I comb my hair on, on the left side or the right side or down the middle, you know? And, um, you know, th- there wasn't that self-conscious of, of God coming and talking to us. And this is what God misses about us. He misses that part of it because we, 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 we coil, we recoil from him because of a sin consciousness. But see, that's supposed to be foreign through the blood, but the church has to present it that way to you. And if, it, if, if the church doesn't do it, then you're gonna have to get it on your own. And so that's why we're here to, this morning, instead of golfing or going to Bucky, you don't have Bucky's, you know, but I, I'll be going to Bucky's. I mean, where else you can do it. It's like a one-stop everything, you know, the cleanest bathrooms on the earth. I don't even work for them. Okay. So what happened was, is that the realms fell. And so you can, you can investigate and see that we only see one sixth of the spectrum of light. So the rainbow colors 
is one sixth. So we see that spectrum, and, and, but there's five sixths that's there that we don't see, but we used to be able to see it. It's the same way with your spirit, your soul, and your body. They used to be one. But they separated when the realms fell, it, it, things expanded. And now you have to work to eat. You have to fight for your rights. You have to present your case. You have middlemen where you have to pay them 50% to do what you could do, but you just don't have the time. So it, it's all this expansion and then entities and things start inserting themselves to make it so the speed of light and all these laws you got to think of them as if it was compressed what is travel you're thinking okay well it's distance and time but see distance and time are the same thing and that's the fault of a lot of scientists and the scientists that know this you can tell who they are there is no, to, it's space time, which means there is no difference between distance and time because it's all relative. In other words, I'll say this because I, I, I'll find out if he didn't say it, but in a minute, but um, I was told that essentially with this, the fabric, the fabric of space time can be bent. So essentially what I was told by this person was that you bring the destination to you. It bends it to you. And he, he, he did it on a napkin. He showed me everything. And um, I don't want to go to jail over the napkin. But what I'm telling you is I was a born again, spirit-filled Christian and I understood this based on the way things used to be. There was no, I mean, if distance isn't an issue, then is there really any time? And if time isn't an issue, then is there any distance? In other words, if they're both the same, but we're told because we got, you know, like, like a, they, they, they wouldn't let us um, do anything here, at, here in Carlsbad for the kids. So I just decided, well, we've got a couple of kids that we know we're going to have. I'll just take them to out of the county and we'll take them to another airport where they actually like kids and they have ice cream and pizza and we'll just do the school there, which is, and I just do this for a select group. Only God tells me who to bring. And yet we usually do on, on that morning, we invite, you know, 20, 30 kids, but they wouldn't have it. So we just went to an airport where they would, but uh, the bottom line with this is, is that I'm not going to let the devil shut me completely down. I just said, we won't, I told Chris, let's not bring the fighter jet. Let's just have our, our airplanes and then we'll just make it work with a, cause I just want to favors uh, special families. And uh, if you weren't chosen, you will be chosen eventually. It's just that when this happened, they pulled the rug on us with just a couple days prior. And I'm like, I prayed in tongues and the Lord said, okay, just do this, this and this, call this person, have them on the plane. So for, for instance, so we took off and we were, it's a four hour drive and it took us 12 minutes. Okay, so to someone who drove, that's their reality, right? But they might, just, just try to think the way that people, there's people that don't even understand flight. They don't even understand. There might be people that don't even know there's airplanes in the world. They might not even understand any of that. So they walk. So it takes you four hours to drive. It takes them weeks to walk it. Okay. That's their reality. So to them, they have a different take on space and time, distance. You know, they understand the math a different way based on experience. But just because you don't experience something greater doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. For instance, this. So this appears on the chart. So then all of a sudden, I'm like, how did this guy know this? If he's lying and, you know, like, why they, you know, like, what, why all this trouble? Why did it take 30 years? But this is on a chart now and it ends up he was telling the truth. So many things happened with this particular incident that proved to me that the, what had happened was, is these things that are operating in other dimensions, for some reason, 
they started to either fall out of the sky or some, you know, some sort of something happened. But what was interesting was, is that this guy, Bob, was given a document from the intelligence agency, AIC, <laughs> and um, he had to read it as part of it. Then he would go to this craft right here and he would work on it. He worked on it for many months. So this is called the sport model. There's nine of them that they had. He worked on this particular one. And um, he, he got to see it fly. And they were just assigned to reverse engineer the propulsion power because that was his field, nuclear propulsion. Okay, so, oh man, this is, okay, we're good. All right, so, yeah, all right, so, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop now so I don't say anything I'm not supposed to say. Okay, the bottom line is I've just kind of whetted your taste bud, all right? So like, but you have Gary Nolan, Gary Nolan, someone who doesn't even have any agenda, he's an immunologist, what would he have to do with UFOs anyway? He doesn't, what happened was, is that he was asked to work on certain things because at, at, at Stanford, and, and, uh, and uh, these others, they have very high-tech equipment that they can analyze things. And so he was asked if they could use the machinery to analyze things. And so he was, he was uh, read into certain things, but he, he realized that Bob Lazar was telling the truth. So he started to be vocal about it. He said, I know I'm gonna lose my, my prize my Pulitzer or whatever, he's going to lose this, these probably, he's going to, you know, he's up for, for it this year or whatever. But this guy is so, he's so intelligent and he, he's just a straight shooter that he started to investigate all these people that I'm mentioning and said, well, th 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 these guys are telling the truth. And so then he brings other people into it. So, um, the book by Annie Jacobson is Operation Paperclip. So I will, I will shift gears after this. Um, the bottom line is, is that she did all the investigations, went to Germany, talked to the relatives of, of Adolf Hitler, and got documents that they had for the Nuremberg, Nuremberg trials that, that his son still had or his whatever, whoever it was. You'll, you'll find that out in here. The bottom line is, is that they brought 1,500 scientists over to America these were SS people. These were the 1,500 evil, evil under Hitler, but they were scientists. Okay, so the, the, even von Braun, who was one of them, he, was, he, he, he did not agree. Is everybody listening? He, he did not agree with weaponizing the technology of these craft and all the things that they had found. So if you look after the war, they brought all this stuff over. What's interesting is, is some of the photographs, you see craft in these caves and things that they were making, they were building them. And they look similar to ones that I have seen others see in the air. And got me to thinking, you know. So I started to investigate like the first sighting that happened in 1947, near Mount Rainier. And on the napkin, the guy, I'm not gonna mention his name because I just don't wanna be flagged, but you can look him up. But that was the first official, but if you look, it wasn't a saucer. It was like a, it was like a, a, a swept curve, like a crescent moon type shape, which is exactly from the photograph what they found in Nazi Germany, in the, that they were building. Just look it up yourselves. But use, use these people that are credible, that did, the, did all the, they don't have any agenda. Okay, so with, with that being said, the craft that th this man saw was what two years prior they had recovered from that, from, and brought all those scientists over. So now they're working on these things here at Los Alamos and Edwards Air Force Base, which is Muroc at the time, and also at, at uh, uh, area 51 at Groom Lake. Okay, so 
You don't, don't go to Groom Lake because they moved everything to Dugway Proving Grounds in Utah. My, and the pilots that worked there, they told me, they said, you, not, everything has been moved. This has already been moved. And, and, and it's hard to get in there. I mean, you can't climb a mountain and take pictures like you can in Nevada. I thought, this is really cool. This is really cool. That I, he says, yeah, we get briefings and um, they're going to reveal all this UFO stuff. And it never happened, of course. But the pilots that worked out there, they said, yeah, yeah, I flew a, an aircraft that they still haven't released. And he said, I saw something I wasn't supposed to see. And I got in trouble because I was taxiing my airplane in, which has never been released to this day. It was so spooky. He said, but what I saw coming out of a hangar was round. And I got in trouble and it wasn't even my fault. I was taxiing my airplane in and this thing's coming out. They overlapped the projects and it was, a, it was this guy's disc. Okay. He said, I got in a room with guys that were threatening me. And I'm like, well, you know, you told me to taxi in. So getting back to the photo from Russia, that aircraft that, that I have as a photo is the, that Aurora project, which is like a Mach 7 or Mach 8 airplane. And that's what replaced the SR-71, which is like the big one, the big deal. Okay, so I saw that fly underneath us. Okay, but what happened was my friend who was out at Groom Lake working and flying the, the stealth fighter when it was classified, he said they left, he said they left the Aurora out on the ramp, which uh, he didn't know that I had this photo from Russia. He said, so they released the stealth fighter and said it's the stealth fighter, but it wasn't. You can see that it's not the stealth fighter. <laughs> the stealth fighter is this big and this thing is like this huge thing. It can go to space. Okay, so I'm trying to get you to think because you're get, you, the process you're going through right now, you're going to have to go through anyway. But I want you to go through it from a biblical standpoint and from the fact that the realms have separated. And so we have time and distance now, but everybody experiences at a different level. So when you pray, you might experience something from the other realm that someone else may not. And it may be for different reasons, but there's a couple of things that are common about Enoch. Enoch pleased God. He walked with God and he was not because he pleased God. Okay, so there are scriptures in the faith chapter of Hebrews 11 that will frame your mind the way you should think in order to operate in the other realms. We call them supernatural realms, but they're actually God's normal. Okay, so when they got this, they got this, I, I believe they got this from a, a meteorite. I believe that this came in and they, they got that. So I believe that substance, you know, it, it had a gravitational field around it. So when they cut it and they, they have amplifiers that they can put in these craft, they can make it so that it's its own gravitational field. And then they can manipulate it. So these things don't work. Um, they don't have drag. They don't have a bow wake. They don't have any of that because they're superseding the higher laws. They're superseding the higher law of physics. And it gets very complicated. But this is enough. Enough for you to start thinking and looking into it. Because the deception is, is that these entities have wanted to embody humans. So the document that Bob was told to read before he would go for his day of working is going to flip you out. The, the document said this. It was about four inches thick and it was on religion. And it was, it was given to them by these entities. So he had to read this. So the intelligence agencies made him read this and then go to the craft. And they gave giving him documents to read. And this one, he, he, so Joe, you can see this on Joe Rogan. He goes, well, just give me, if it was four inches, just give us like the bottom line. He goes, well, the bottom line is, is that these entities just look at us, look at us like containers. I go, well, bingo. And, and Joe's like, you know, I, I mean, Joe's smart enough to know, like, because, you know, he's, he's on the border of becoming, you know, a believer, I believe. But there's so much fake out there, he's just tired of it. He's tired of crazy Christians and he's tired of crazy people, period. You can tell. But he wants the truth. And I mean, I would rather, you know, have that guy in a foxhole with me. You know what I mean? Somebody's going to have my back and is like, I want to know the truth. I don't want 
um, you know, I don't want the fake or smoke. I just, just give me the bottom line and I'd rather just have to deal with it. And I've learned to just take my medicine, you know, what's the truth and I'll deal with it, Lord. And, and it's like, what I found is, is we're not ready for it a lot of times. So we've been locked out of this realm, right? We've been locked out of several different dimensions through the fall. So now the only way to access this is through faith. But faith has been misrepresented to be a system to get something. But faith actually in the Hebrew, in a, the Hebrew word for faith is the word trust. And it has to do with an intimate relationship. So Abraham, it was credited to him as righteous because um, he trusted God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. So he didn't have the law. So there was nothing to obey to please God. So that's why Abraham is used because he had faith, but it was trust. Okay, so, so this is it. Faith is the substance. Trust is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So the evidence of things not seen, it mean, what it means is there's unseen, but there's evidence for that unseen. This is what I'm talking about this morning. And this is what has been hidden from all of us. Now the government hasn't helped because they want that, that technology because they want to weaponize it. Okay, but the, the church does not want people, the spirit behind Religion does not want people to operate in this knowledge of faith because they can't control you. And this is what I found out. My years of study about what we're talking about here, what I've concluded is because I've been told by the people that actually saw the beans at Roswell in that crash, actually were part of that on their deathbed said everything. I have people that have told me things. They took down the videos but the bottom line, the bottom line was, is that the government was told to form all the intelligence. If you look after Roswell, all the intelligence agencies were formed, including NASA, including, you know, all the others, they were all formed. They split. It used to be Army Air Force. They split it to Army and Air Force. Now, now you got Space Force. Well, why, why do we need Space Force? Okay. When, if you notice when when, when the real president started talking about Space Force, it started hitting the fan because, see, this is part of the end time agenda that they don't want you talking about this stuff. Because, are you ready? All the people that, some of them have disappeared, some of them have died, they told me that they, the government does not want people to know that they cannot protect you. Because these things are coming in and out at will. So, what time is it? Oh my God, it's already time? I, I had three more, I had three more things. You gotta be kidding, is it 11.30 already? Huh? Oh, this watch. <laughs> is it 1018? 1018. Oh, see, because this watch, I took this when I broke the sound barrier. I went to NASA and flew that F-104. And we broke the sound barrier. And I flew, with, I put this watch on, it was brand new. Somebody handed it to me the day before at, at a spirit school. So I wore it. So it's the watch that broke the sound barrier. And um, it's having a hard time ever since. <laughs> Okay, so if you promise me that you will grab a hold of what I'm going to tell you right now, I, I will keep going. Okay, okay, this is what, what the bottom line is, is that everything that you would ever need, anything that you would think or, no, or never think is, is available to you, period. God has already provided everything you need for life and godliness through those precious promises. Okay, so Peter understood the other realms and he said that we could be a partaker of the divine nature 
and escape the corruption that's in the world caused by lust. Okay, the, the, the idea of lust is the pulling on the flesh to satisfy our, our needs right now for that day in that mentality. Whereas faith takes a hold of those things that are not seen, but we have the evidence of it through faith. But the word faith is not a system where God's not a, a ATM. You don't, you don't go and get money out of him or pull a lever like you do at Las Vegas. He's not a slot machine. So he's not like Herb Kelleher. He was, he, he acted like he, I was his friend and everybody felt that way because he remembered your name. He asked about your family. He helped you at your job and he didn't need to do that. He was a billionaire, but he would ask me every time he saw me, what can I do to make your job easier and better? How can we help the customer? Would you see anything, anything that we need to do to change? He was, he was touchable, right? Yeah. But he didn't call me every night and say, hey, well, how was your day? So I didn't have that intimate relationship like a father with him, but he was kinder than, than most Christians. But he was drunk before 10 o'clock a.m. <laughs> I mean, he had, a, a, he had wild turkey like sitting on his desk, but he was the nicest, kindest man. And he got it. He said, he said, my customers are you, Kevin. Your customers are the people that fly on the airplane. He says, take care of your customers and I'll take care of my customers. And he would, he would take care of us. I'd get checks from him. Kathy, we, well, Valentine's day, we would get a check for $200. But he didn't call me every night. Okay, so the idea with God is, is that you have an intimate relationship where you, you can check in with him. So I was a hireling for Southwest, even though I was family. I fought for my company. We weren't allowed to talk about Delta. We could get fired for promoting another airline. We, we, we did, I mean, if my hair touched my collar, I got one warning and then I was fired. If I it was a minute late, I had a warning and then I was fired. I wasn't allowed to show my tattoos. I, was, I didn't have any, but I wasn't allowed to pierce my ears. I wasn't allowed to weigh over a certain weight. And that's the way, and then this isn't even a Christian company. He said, this is your company and we're gonna look clean and mean and we're gonna be nice and you're gonna get your hair cut and you're gonna weigh a certain amount. And I was a hireling. I was, I was working for pay. Okay, but for God, it's kind of sad if you're going to think that you can like pay him to do something for you, like you're gonna give to get, or you're going to behave for one day so that he'll like you enough to get you that new car. You know, and I, I mean, we get these things like where if I can just behave, if I can just like keep my mouth shut for one day, you know, if I could just not slap somebody, you know, like I, I, you, think, you think that all this behavior thing where God unconditionally loves you and has already displayed his love for you, but it's, he's reached, crossed all these dimensions to get to you. He's literally come down to you so that you can come up to him. Okay, so we've, we, we, we emphasize the coming down and we emphasize the cross. We emphasize all that, but we don't emphasize the fact that we were raised with him, which means we were raised spiritually with him and we're seated with him in the heavenly realms. That's what Paul would say. So trust, faith, is that I take hold of things that are in my future, but they're in God's present. Okay, so everything I need right now, he's standing there with it. Okay, but the faith that I have, which is trust, which is a relationship that I'm not a hireling, I'm a son, is that I have it. Faith is the substance. It's the evidence. I have the, the, the word there is, is a title deed. The word there means title deed. It's the title deed of things not seen. So you could buy a house and get the title deed in the mail and you've not seen it, but you have it. Okay, you got it? 
what I've just explained to you is what we should be teaching as far as faith. Faith is very much more an intimate relationship with God than it is a system of, of getting things. So I know this for a fact because God ha has done it to me, but he has shown me all through the scripture is he will purposely allow you to get to the bottom of yourself and go without in order for you to be trusted with great things. You will actually go the right other way. So the more you give, the less you have. He will do that because he's bringing correction so that you will not be a hireling. You will be a son or a daughter. Is that clear? Okay, so the government, okay, the government, science, just think about this, write it down. Science is observation. So science is based on observation, but observations will, will change the narrative, the facts. Okay, so Pluto was a planet and then all of a sudden Pluto is not a planet anymore. Okay, but you didn't do anything about that. You still went to work and you didn't have a funeral for Pluto and you didn't, you didn't like, you know, like get white out and take it off your, your chart. And you know what? Pluto's still circling saying, you know what? Next observation, I'm back in. And of course he was, he's back in. But you know what? What if they were just playing with all of us to see how much we would just tolerate? What if all this that is happening is just to see if we're ready to usher in the Antichrist yet? If we're just going to let it happen. See, and then someone got, got in to leadership that was blowing the whistle and the plug on everything. And they, 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 they just about lost all their hair over, over that person. And that's why they have said, even now, the present has said... I don't care what it takes, but that man will never be in office again. Why would, why would someone say that, actually admit that, that what they're going to do? We're going to make sure he never, right? He said that, right? Like why, you can see all his cabinet going, oh, yeah. shh. <laughs> well, why? Because he released all the UFO material. I mean, it was only for two days. I got as much as I could. I, there wasn't enough terabytes of information. It was just tons of stuff, you know? I'm like, oh my God, I love this man. <laughs> I mean, he was brave. And, but, you know, they just, they just want him to go away. Okay, what I'm telling you is, is that they would want you to go away if you became like Enoch. So if you're, you're here and all of a sudden you're 20 miles away and they can't put cuffs on you, that kind of thing, okay? Well, they, they understand this stuff at a high level. They already understand these things. And, and I was told that they know that these are from another realm. They're not from another planet. Okay, so these documents show that the narrative of these entities or how they view us is that they can't be of a higher order. They're from another realm that makes them look like a higher order. Okay, so the biggest deal is you're going to have to somehow adjust now with what you call the physical realm and the spiritual realm, and then there's a solical realm. You're going to have to somehow let that go because God was upset with the Assyrians, and so he sent an angel that killed 185,000 um, soldiers, uh, one angel. Didn't even have a name. Didn't have a YouTube channel. He didn't, he, 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 how did he kill 185,000 soldiers with a sword that you can't see? Okay. All right. So then how, how is Jesus like walking around for 40 days preaching and no one does anything about it? You know, Herod found out about it. You know, Pilate found out about it. You know that uh, Pilate's wife was, I told you. <laughs> Right, right. So you, you have all this going on in 40 days. He just moves about. Okay. The thing of it was, is he was coming and eating with them and he was getting up and walking through the wall. He had a physical body and he walked through a wall. The food did not stay on the wall. Okay. So, so you can't say, well, he is spiritual now because he wasn't, he, he was, he was still in his body. 
He still had the marks. He still had everything, right? Okay, so how do you explain that? See, but science can explain it. But they don't, that's classified. So I've already seen the films. They take them down, but every now and then they'll come back up because people just grab them like, you know, put them on their hard drive. And then at a later date, they put them back up and then the government will grab them again. Okay, so I've already seen the films of, of our soldiers that are cloaked. So Al Jazeera accidentally put this out where they were going through checkpoints and you can see the soldiers because you can see with the, they changed the, flir, the different um, filters so you have different frequencies. So they're wearing some sort of, of uniform that only with certain sensors you can see them so they, they were doing that they were flipping because they, they could see the sol our soldiers jumping up on, on the vehicles and sitting on the hoods riding through the border okay so the idea of light is that you, you only see an image if there's a return from the object back to your eye So you got to do a lot of studying about this, but the eye picks up a return just like radar. So if there's, as it starts to get dark, it's harder to see a return. So like if you try to take a picture of a stealth aircraft, like a fighter, like a stealth fighter, um, a lot of times the camera won't focus on it because it's built to deflect. So there's no return. It deflects the return. So when it bounces back to the camera, there's no data. It's the same with radar. It's the same way with your eyes. Okay, do you get it? Okay, but technology can see past that if you have different filters. That's why, um, like uh, what Captain um, Chris flew, the F-18, the new ones, that's why with the new equipment, they were able to get these objects that they are you know, showing before Congress now. They, they're, they were there all the time. But they choose to appear or not to appear. But even if they disappear, there are ways through the other spectrums that we don't see to, that they're still there. Okay, so it, angels are in this room right now. Yeah. I mean, they're all over. And at times, like in the corner of your eye, you'll see an image or a movement. And that's because the way that light, your eye shaped and the way that light comes in, that at times you could at the sides because of the way the shape of your eyeball at times it will pick up the other realm so that's why like our cameras in our headquarters pick up these entities when they come in and it triggers the camera but it's it's not visual you can't see them but I can see them like I walk in there it's completely dark and I can see the entity standing in the room on my phone and the camera's right there but it's because it's a different frequency. And, and it's interesting as I close this section is that they all respond to the name of Jesus. Okay, so that doesn't, even, the, even the, the, uh, the, the, these craft, these craft will do 90 degree angle turns. I mean, I've watched it in broad daylight. They were metal craft. They were going way too fast. They were, they were, they were ball, metal balls. It did 90 degree angle turns at over 300 miles an hour. Well, almost 400 because it was 300 knots. Okay, how, do you, how, how does anything survive that? The angle turn away from me was because I raised my set hand and I said, you foul lying devils, go in Jesus name. And it did a right angle turn. Um, not only that, I looked online and others had reported it in my neighborhood. And I actually have a video. I have a, actually have a video of the, what I saw that someone filmed. I actually have it on my phone. The exact thing that defied, there was no, there was no bow wake. So there was, there, was, there, was, there was a field you could see was coaching the air in front of it, telling it it was coming to get out of the way. And it was getting out of the way, so it had no resistance. And then off the back, it was being coached so that there was no break. It wasn't the, the cannonball effect of the crackling and the, the, the drag. There was no drag. And I'm thinking, okay, they have this technology. Can you imagine if you put this on my airplane? Then there would be no drag. My fuel, my fuel bill would be like six cents. 
<laughs> now, I've seen this. I've seen this over my house. I've seen other videos. Okay, so science came into these things by observation, not based on Bible. But when they saw that a lot of the artifacts and a lot of the art and a lot of the writings were corresponding with the Bible, they took them away. There was 185,000 of these clay tablets in, in, the, in the Sphinx. It was a library. Check it out. They're all gone. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go on to something else. <laughs> so, essentially, without having to know all this, you could, by faith, by trust, with your walk with God, take hold of a document, a title deed, and take it in by faith, and you have it. And it doesn't matter the distance or the time anymore, because you have it. That's faith. The faith is I have it. This is what everyone was commended for. They didn't see it, but they had it. Because it exists. Everything that was made was made through Jesus Christ. Everything that you need for life and godliness has already been given to you through what? Promises, okay? So... Prayer can be very simple. So I have had a friend who has had cancer. He just had it for the fourth time. And he's like one of my best friends, but nobody knows it. But when he calls me, he goes, well, got to go back in. I go, you shall live and not die. <laughs> It comes right out of my mouth. And, and he's, he's so good at this. He goes, yeah, you got that right. And of course, it was nothing. We don't know where it went. Okay? So if you see something and it disappears, you say, well, we don't know where it went. It might still be there. And that's what these crafts do. But this is all classified at the highest level. And to tell you the truth, you'll never know all this stuff. You'll never understand all this stuff. But what Satan does not want us to, to know is that we have access to these other realms through Jesus Christ. I don't need a craft to go to Mars because they already ruined that planet. It's pretty obvious. I don't need wings to fly. I don't need angels. Angels don't need wings to fly. I mean, I'm just telling you, the angels I've seen, they don't have wings. They don't need them. They do fine without them. The ones that have wings are in the throne. But see, that always goes over well. Please don't write. But the seraphim and the cherubim have wings, you know. But that, that they have a purpose around God. Now, it's, it's a, so funny is, is that a, a disc is perfect shape to go in any direction at any moment, and it has a leading edge, 360 degrees. So, a disc is perfect. But you don't need to have an airfoil if you're not going by the laws of thrust and lift. And that's what this does. It's anti-gravity. There are no limitations and there is no energy expended. Everything is convertible back and forth. This goes over well because I'm just a flight attendant praising tongues, you know. But the bottom line is, is there's always a price when you convert. But with these things, you, it doesn't, you don't lose. That's what Bob said. You don't lose anything. It's stable. It's a staple isotope that literally creates, it says, he says it's a heart-shaped environment around the, the craft and it doesn't have any hindrance to do any, it can go anywhere at once, as fast as it wants and the occupants wouldn't even feel a thing. Wow. 
Okay, so you've heard of all these things in the Bible and you've heard of people have had these supernatural events and it has happened to me where I, uh, I have been tra translated mm -hmm. and, and people, people, people can verify that I was there. Mm -hmm. They saw me in that country. Mm -hmm. and I had appeared to them a year prior to them meeting me. They can tell you the road that I was on and the conversation I had with them. And that country is a country I pray for every day. But I've never been there. But I guess I have. Okay, so everybody will mock you when you talk like this, but yet the government will, will downplay these things. But what if it's because they know that you're getting pretty close? So if someone who would definitely... Uh, win an, in an office announces that from their city they're going to run for this certain office and they take off and disappear and then a person that you would know who it is moves to New York and then gets the slot yeah. do I need to go any further please don't make me okay so what, what happens is, is that if you really look that two days prior, Rumsfeld announced that they had lost several trillion dollars that they can't account for in the Pentagon. And then that section of the Pentagon got hit two days later by a wingless airplane. Because I already saw the one, I mean, there are 80, I mean this is from the mouth of someone who is a whistleblower, 88 cameras. None of them had film. Okay, but one got out. And, it, and I, I know because it wasn't a 757 because there were no 757 parts found. And where's the list of the people? But when you look at the film, that thing was coming at about 3,000 miles an hour and it had no wings. Well, it had little ones. Looks like something else to me. I'm not going to say it. But what I'm saying is, is that what if... You're being told the narrative. If you look at the only, uh, all the cameras on all the buildings, they're all missing except for one that's CGI of an airplane hitting a tower. It's CGI. You can see it because they, they, they weren't, they were sloppy. They were sloppy when they did it. So a part of the aircraft showing it wouldn't be visible. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm telling you this. Because I want you to start to realize that Satan is trying to give you a narrative that diminishes who you really are and your ability to access the other realms. Okay, so we're not called to fight the government. I pay my taxes. I pay more. I do everything I'm told in order to preach the gospel. Because that's the bottom line. But with Coffee Talk, I'm telling you this because we need to start, most of you just need validation that you're on the right track. I, I don't really feel that anyone in here is not at the same, the same speed of, of what's going on. I, I feel like you, this is refreshing to you. But I want to tell you that I've, I've, I have many, many more individuals that have told me the things that are coming out now, but it was 20, 30 years ago. So now I know they were telling me the truth, but they were, they, they, they were in a, a lot of trouble. And my one friend who also disappeared, worked, was, worked as a captain for Southwest Airlines. He is missing, gone. He, he never worked for Southwest. Well, that's kind of funny because the autopilot, you know, couldn't have flown all those flights with me and him. But he told me stuff. He said, we were working on weapons to shoot these things down and we gave up. He said, it's as though they knew what we were gonna do before we did it. And they would move out of the way just in time as we were pressing the button to, to launch missiles. They would wait on purpose to play with us. They would come in they would come in from space and stop right, right at the edge of the radar station 
and right outside the range of our missiles, they'd come in at 15, 20,000 miles an hour and stop on a dime and sit there for hours. And as soon as we would put our, come closer to get our radar on them, it would move out just enough to where the radar wouldn't touch. They knew exactly what our capabilities were. So this kind of thing will instill fear in the public if it comes out. Okay, but what if it is, there is a spiritual answer to it? Okay, so this is, this is what God's solution is to it. You need to get involved in the marketplace and you need to establish business and you need to use your, your God-given gifts to produce wealth. You need to have talents that you can turn back into God. So he gave you this, what did you do with it? How, how much did you produce from that? You see, it's not about the money, it's being focused on the money, but what if it's digital? You see, it's, it's, it's everything about your life has to prosper. You have to be able to help your family and those around you. That's the kingdom. It's not just for yourself. There is no prosperity gospel. There is the gospel. There's no healing gospel. There's the gospel. There's no deliverance gospel. So, you know, I'm not a deliverance minister. It doesn't say that in the Bible that there shall be deliverance and healing ministers. It says that we are all called to go and preach and, and speak the gospel and signs and wonders will follow. Jesus didn't focus on one thing because he was everything. And when he would show up, who he was would hit the demons and they would leave it. You call it a deliverance ministry. Jesus wasn't even thinking about deliverance because he was the deliverer. That's the way we're supposed to think now these days. We're appointed as ambassadors. See, science is starting to confirm it and you hear whistleblowers talking about it. But remember that science is observation. They don't have everything. So just, just because, let's see, where did those books go that were here? Did the aliens take them already? Because <laughs> I'm going to go on, I'm going to go on to the next subject. Um, okay, so I have, I have a whole bunch. I have 110 books that I've read, read, read but this one by Annie Jacobson is called Project Operation Paperclip. This talks about all the technology that came to the United States, and that's why the United States got involved and got over there. Same thing happened with Iraq. It wasn't about uh, weapons of mass destruction or oil. They had found the tomb of Nimrod. They had found his, his body, and they wanted the DNA. This has been brought out in the emails of our, of our chili, chillery, is that we got to get in there and get that DNA. Hello? Why do you think the whole email thing? When you find out why we really went in there, it's because of Saddam Hussein claimed to be, I think it was fourth or fifth generation Nebuchadnezzar. And when he did that, he went and rebuilt. He, you can see it, he, 150 miles south of Baghdad, he was rebuilding Babylon. And they had uncovered all kinds of things there. And they got DNA. So the whole Jurassic Park thing, I'm telling you, that, that, all that is fed to Hollywood. Mm, wow. yep. They got the DNA. And that's what it says in the, in the emails. Why do you think that certain people are in jail and others are not? Why are so many people immune? Because it's part of the end time agenda. So this, this would help you. If, you, I, if I were you, I'd watch the videos on her. Uh, she, you're going to fall in love with her. She's amazing. I want to meet her. Okay. The, the two books, that if I was going to say, just read these and um, have a good life, you know, <laughs> would, be, would be this guy worked for the JPL. He uh, left his notes at home. His daughter published it. Oh, my. So he was the head of Jet Propulsion Laboratory for NASA for 30 years. He was investigating UFOs secretly for them. Um, all the material was found by a daughter. And, oh, my, she just went ahead and published it on her own. And here we have it. So, um, so it's called uh, Unconventional Flying Objects by Paul Hill. And you can check it out. He is highly, he's, he's passed. But... He was told by NASA, you're not to prove these exist. We just need to know how they work. <laughs> so if you read this 
and you read this one, the day after Roswell, I think you're pretty set. And I'll see you at the millennial reign. Because the day after Roswell is, is Colonel Philip Corso. Uh, he was assigned to take all the artifacts that they found at Roswell because they had uh, these suits that they were wearing. They had the, uh, uh, everything was these fiber that had light coming through them. And so they called it fiber optics and they gave it to Corning. And so he says how he went to all these. He went, he went with the suits and he gave it to uh, a person who they, all of a sudden they invented Kevlar. And um, so all of these things, uh, all the circuitry, everything in, in 47 that was found, this guy was in charge of getting it into the industrial complex, which our previous presidents warned us about, allowing civilians to get involved with these things. But they, didn't, they were told to do this because of the funding that the, they could, re, they, they reverse engineered a lot of the stuff that we have today, like the microwave and things like that was all the technology that they found on these craft. Now, it just opens another can of worms because then you're thinking, okay, so if they're highly technical like this, it, but really, do we really know when these, these beings started? Do we know who they really are? Uh, we know that they're demonic, but there are different levels that it's just, I mean, you know, it just opens another can of worms. So, okay, so you have this. Um, Okay, so you have Gary Nolan, okay, you have Annie, Jacobson, yeah, let's see who else I can, I'll give this time, uh, that's enough, you guys have enough to work on for a long time, so anyway, um, Think of it this way. Don't, don't become unsettled and afraid. Just realize that the Bible hints to these kind of things in Genesis 6, but it also shows how there was physical evidence of spiritual things happening and there were like things left and that there is a lot of unexplained things happening and, and breaking in and out and coming through and you've seen things in your house and in your relatives and maybe in you, in you at times that uh, we, need to, we need to really f focus on. Okay, so uh, the next thing that I want to talk about coffee talk, that was a long coffee talk, but we, I feel exhausted. <laughs> so, you know, how many of you, how many of you have, have had something happen where something that was, that, you, that was a miracle that appeared, that just appeared out of nowhere? Like really like physically have, right? I mean, most of us have, right? Okay, like you, it's either an answer to prayer or something just happened and you're like, how did that get here? How did this just happen? Like, how did they just like uh, cancel my debt? When yesterday when I looked at it, it was on there and now it's not. And then they, they don't know what you're talking about, right? Have anybody had stuff like that happen? Okay. Okay, so... The thing that the Lord Jesus Christ wants me to let you know in this episode of Coffee Talk is that there are times where he does things just because he wants to, and it's none of your business. I'm serious. And it doesn't have anything to do with your merit or behavior, your genealogy, your hairstyle. Okay, so it brings up this, it brings up this, this thing that I got to address because I have gone through this with people that I love, um, the, they, we, we get under this, I don't know how to explain it right, so I'm gonna mess it up, but we get into this idea of what it is to be spiritual. We have this idea of what a spiritual person is and what that entails and like how they got there. Okay, so you have all these things like, so you study people, you like, you watch the TV programs that I've been on and you're inquiring, okay? And you're wanting to know, so what you do is, let's be honest, you wanna replicate what they did to see if it works for you. So you, you, you sit and you watch, you watch, um, you, you watch your, uh, you know, me or somebody be interviewed and then you're like, oh, I hope they have an offer. Of course they have an offer, you know? I mean, you know, how do you think they pay for, yeah. for, for everything, you know? And so, you know, one of the things with me was I can do math. 
So I, I got to thinking, these are all my friends. I'm like, so you're getting 80%. And Warrior Notes is getting 20. And the Lord said, I mean, right there, I mean, you know, you would know who it is. I mean, you know who they all are. The Lord says, flip it. I go, Ooh, okay. I go, I go, I got to go. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what are, we, what, what are we doing, Lord? He goes, you own everything. No one touches it. You own your own everything, everything, publishing company, TV, everything, the rights to everything. So I put my name on everything, got copyrights, patents, whatever. Uh, what's the other one? There's trademarks. trademarks. So I have like, how many I mean, do we have? We could fill this whole wall. I mean, even my name, you know, I have to, I mean, people want to steal my name. It's like, oh yeah. And they want to sell it back to me. I'm serious. That's why I, I'm really careful. We just launch stuff because everybody wants to copy it, you know. So next week, the, and everything I say next week, and all the ministries are starting it, you know, the pantries and the school, and you know, it's a little area. Like, yeah, you should been. Everybody should have been doing this 2,000 years ago, you know. Anyway, where was I? So I own it. So um, I, my poli- Kathy, my policy is this: if we can't own it outright as a ministry, like pay cash for it, we're not going to get it. Period. That's it. Because we fought dead and we won. And it was a 10-year battle. And I never want to have to do that again. So I, we won against that. And when we won, I remember when we paid off, like we would pay it, we paid off um, credit cards and then the car. And then somebody paid off our house. And paid off another house. So all three uh, houses that we've owned were paid off. And this is before we're ministries, ministers, you know. So it wasn't like the ATM or anything, you know, like idea. It wasn't because I was a minister and get, people were given in my anointing or anything like that. I didn't sell prayer shawls, you know, for $1,000. Uh, this is, we, we worked hard. I mean, all the time. Me and Kathy hardly saw each other. Because the Lord said, get out of debt. It took 10 years. I worked double time and triple time. I flew all the time. And Kathy worked all the time. And we bought TV cameras and books to sell when we, did, when we started ministry. We paid for it out of our own pocket and we did it with, with, where we worked extra. We scheduled ourselves for extra pay. Okay, we decided when it finally, we paid off our last bill. We, we had a ribeye dinner. We cooked ourselves. We sat there and we held hands and we went to pray and we started shaking and crying. Because that gorilla left our house. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. It was, it, was, it was something really left us. And we started crying. And we have never been the same since. So we never want, that when that gorilla comes to the door, like he doesn't get in. And, and um, this is the thing, is, is that this is the biggest fight of your life, is, is the debt. You know, and uh, because it's a whole world system. So it's just like the disinformation campaign we just talked about with, with the previous coffee talk, which seems like so long ago. <laughs> but it's disinformation to get you in a certain thought process so that you never, you never rise above it. And if you do, they, they want to stop you because, you know, you get a whole ballroom of people, people then that, that are going to like, wow, that's really, that's amazing. I never even thought of that. Then you say, okay, no, no, we won't go. You know, and everybody's like chanting, you know, and then you have this thing where you're, you're all going to grow a garden now and you're all going to be prepared for three months of food and water. You're all going to always have that and cycle it through. You're always going to be thinking about your exit point. You're always going to have a go bag, you know, I have a go bag with everything. I, I, and I, I, I can just grab and go and I can take, I, a, I can take on a small army or, and Kathy and I will eat pretty good in a, wherever we're at, you know. But it, it never happens. But the day it does, I'm going to look at Kathy and we're going to smile, you know. Because we're going to have band-aids and matches and tweezers and whatever else we need and water, you know. But we pray against all these things. Okay, so in this coffee talk, we have this definition of what spiritual is. And we all interpret it different, but it's all because of narrative, because of media. Okay, so if someone hadn't told you something, 
it kind of shifts you about like what your expectations are. And so what it is, is it becomes unrealistic. I'm just telling you, when you watch these shows, it's unrealistic expectations because if you, if you know these people, you know, some of them to have happened what they had happened. I mean, are you ready? Are you ready to completely give your life over to prayer? Like my friend, my friend, my friend has, who is a true prophet. He doesn't want to be on TV. He's been a pastor for 40, 43, 44 years. Probably the best book I've ever read, he wrote. What's it called, honey? That. Yeah. One Minute with God. Oh, it's going to go to the bestseller list now. One Minute with God. Anybody read it? Yeah. <laughs> this guy has had, like the stuff that was happening with Kathy and I, when we met him, this guy was having happen all the time too. And so he wrote a book about it. And I go, this guy, he gets it. <laughs> Keith Ellis. And so every now and then he'll, he calls me, he goes, the Lord just wanted you to know. And within two weeks, it happens. And it's stuff that can't happen. But he, he said, well, it's going to happen anyway. I go, I don't even want that. <laughs> How does he do that? The same way you're going to do it. Okay, so what is a spiritual person? See, you have to classify a spiritual person using Jesus as an example. <laughs> So Jesus, when he came in the flesh, he yielded to the father and his words were chosen according to the spirit. He said he didn't speak on his own because that's a big one. Okay. Then anything he did, it was only because the father showed him to do it. So he didn't go anywhere. He didn't do anything unless the father had told him. So he had visions of walking on the water. I can show you scriptures, everything that he did, all the miracles, they're actually in the prophets in Ezekiel and Isaiah. Because I was told when I was in heaven that all the prophets, including David, were given insight, scriptures that he would fulfill. And they're all through the Bible. So if you look at the things he said and the things he did, randomly they're placed where the prophets just say it randomly. Isaiah just like all of a sudden, and it talks about walking on the water. It's just a random thing. So David would slip into the prophetic and write Psalms, and then Jesus would quote him on the cross. And th but there's insight about the belly of the earth in, in Psalm 16. And then even Peter in the New Testament in Acts quotes it, saying, you will not leave my soul in hell. Well, Jesus didn't go to hell. Well, then why did Peter say that? And why did, is it in Psalm 16, which is what he's quoting? Jesus went to hell. I mean, it says it. So he, somebody's lying. But there's a couple different people. We got Peter. We got, we got the Psalms. Okay, so it gets really cool because there is... What we, we say in Greek, alpha and omega, but in, in, in Hebrew and Aramaic, it's, al, it's the alpha and the tav. You know, it's the beginning and the end, okay? So you got the alpha and omega, al, alpha and the tav, beginning, um, the beginning of the alphabet, end of the, of the alphabet for Hebrew. Well, in the Hebrew text, like if you read Hebrew, I, I got taught by somebody who was my instructor. He, he grew up in Jerusalem, so he, he knew how to speak. And he taught me how to speak it and to read it. But I don't have anybody to really talk to with, with about it. So I've kind of lost a lot of that. It'll come back. But when I was studying, he would show me things. And I said, well, the, all the scholars agree. There, every, every so many chapters or verses, there's this marker. It's the Aleph and the Tav is just randomly put there. So in Hebrew, like you'll be reading about Abraham and all of a sudden Aleph Tav, and then it's like, 
what is that? You know, and nobody, nobody really knows. And I'm like, well, I know what it is. It's a marker. When Jesus was reading the, the, the Tanakh and the Torah, all the, all the Old Testament, it was a marker because if you look at where it's at, it's things about him. So when he was growing up, he was growing in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. He was growing into who he was. Even though he already was that, he had to grow up as a human being as well. He was reading the Bible. So that's why he quoted David and quoted Isaiah. And it's because he had to memorize all that as a Jewish boy. But there were markers. Look at you all. So it was all interwoven in the whole story of the Bible, who he was, and it's all there. Okay, so if Jesus was spiritual, and he should be our, our example that we follow, you have to measure everything up. If he said, what I've done, you're going to do, and even greater things, even if that means numerically, you know, that's fine with me. We can't even do the, the, the things he did, let alone the greater things. So we haven't gotten to the things he's done yet. Okay, but he said we should do them. Then we got to watch that we're not given by religion. I don't care who it is. Yeah. Given narratives that would take us away from that, that height, that, that bar. We should always be, be keeping that in focus with everything. So even as I'm ministering to you now, um, if there's a demon bothering you, it has to go. Yeah, go. I, mean, I, I'm, I mean, every word I've ever spoken this morning, the whole time I'm driving out devils as well. Amen. And I'm, I'm believing that people are feeling the impartation of healing uh, in their body every single word for the last couple hours. I have, I, I, I have been doing multiple things in the... Because I am not, my standard is God's normal. Yes. Okay, so being spiritual is bringing into this realm, the other realms into this realm, which are the higher, the higher order, so to speak. So a person who does this is observed and they are placed on a pedestal, Come on. okay? Because they can take, so you hear them on Sid Roth and all these places, you know, and, and they're, they're just presenting to you this story and then you can buy the material and everything. However, we, just like uh, with foreign countries, like the Chinese, they don't invent anything on their own. They just wait until we invent it, right? And they, we do all the work and, on pay and spend all the money. And then they replicate it. And so most enemies, um, it's, hard, it's hard to catch up to someone who's already been shot out of a gun. You know, like if you shoot, uh, if you shoot an arrow or a, a bullet, you can't fire another one and expect it to hit it if it's the same caliber and the same everything. You know, you're always going to be behind. And that's how it is with people who have learned to become a servant and to tap in to the unlimited power of God, the unlimited wisdom of God, and the ability to drive out sickness and poverty and demons, to, to, to drive them out. So that if you're left without that influence, a lot of times your body will heal itself. A lot of times your finances will break open because these demons were actually holding. I mean, I know people in here right now. I've never met you, but I, I'm, I recognize you. And I pray for you and you have businesses. And I, I, I purposely, I don't want your money. So I don't, I don't even introduce myself to you because that's what I was taught to do from, you know, that's what you do as a minister, you know. You find the rich people, you know. It's hilarious. Yeah, I don't want, <laughs> Jesus found poor people, you know. <laughs> Right? He preached to the poor. Yep. <laughs> now, if you're rich, it's probably because you're doing something right, you know? Yep. But, you know, I don't trust Bill Gates, but he's rich. Come on. <laughs> I get a headache every time he talks, you know? 
I don't like he's buying up all the taters too, you know, <laughs> and all the farmland, you know. <laughs> and then he's giving out free fries, you know. The thing about it, you, you, do you want, like if you look at the parent companies that, that, own, that own your macaroni and cheese and your cereals, they're the same ones that made cigarettes. Mm. I mean, you, you gonna trust your kids with the cereal? Nope. Amen. I mean, if you look, you have, to, you have to dig. But coffee talks about thinking for yourself with a little caffeine involved, you know, but it's like, <laughs> You, you have to start to say, listen, man, you know, do I want, like, like, do you want a fox being interviewed to take care of your hen house, you know? I mean, if a person's a, a predator, if a person's a predator, do you want them to be your leader? Just say no to the mermaid. <laughs> okay. So I posted on Facebook to let you know one of the subjects. I'm going to keep my promise. It's a picture of a big long line. At, there's two windows. One guy is saying um, those who are interested in the, the, the character and the gifts and the fruit of the spirit line up here, there's nobody. And then those who are interested in the prophetic and the gifts of the spirit line up here and then everybody's out the door, you know, in line. And I said, let's talk about this at Carl's bed. And so I, I'm gonna talk about this because um, we are attracted to the sensational because we really are hungry for the supernatural. But the supernatural comes with a price because it's, it's, it's another realm, which means the flesh literally is the reason why we're not fully participating in it. Okay, so you have your flesh and you have, then you have your mind, which could be framed wrongly. So people frame their mind wrongly and then when they become so involved with what they have framed to where they will go and commit that which they have framed, then they have opted out of their rights. So if someone is going to come in, they've already premeditated to bring harm, then they've waived their rights with me. So they're not walking out alive. I'm not gonna let them. Because when they come in there with the intent to harm you or me, they have already waived their rights. They've already, it's premeditated. Is everybody listening to me? Okay, so. If they want to come into your house, they will not leave your house on their own. They'll be carried out. Okay, why? Because they made a choice to cross boundaries. Okay? So people waive their rights when they hand themselves over to evil. That is why there are certain people that, that are not retrievable because their conscience becomes seared. And this happens, this happens in... I can't even, I don't even say the word, but it's just north of here. It's, it's not holy wood. <laughs> but this is what happens. Satan gets a hold of the media. He gets a hold of the music. And it's too late because these guys, these guys have already spilled the beans and then they disappear, you know. Uh, you know, all, all your favorites, they spill the beans, a couple of them. And, and then yeah. next scene, they're either dead or they're drugged up and they, they act like it never happened. But I know Jim Carrey, you know, he's not, like, he's already spilled the beans and then all of a sudden, you know, it didn't happen. But they, he, he spills the beans about the Illuminati and all these things. And I, and I, but I've already heard it. He goes, you know, we sa I had to sacrifice my firstborn or my mom. And, and, and then you see that they died, you know, they're gone, you know. And um, you look at these people, like what happened with some of your favorite people that I could name. And now they're, it's just bizarre. You, you have the film of them saying this and then all of a sudden they're like married to a different person and the one who sold themselves and drank blood is like their albums are doing great and this poor little guy is like nothing now. Yeah. Same thing happened where like you start to see these actors, they're not used anymore because they, they, they went to, f they spilled the beans, you know. Got it? Okay, so the sacrifice of of being, you know, like, so they, they, these people, you can, he says it, my, they promise you, if you will do this, every demon, every demon everywhere will go into every household and make sure that your album gets bought. 
and their album sales. And I mean, I can hit a trash can and sound better. I mean, my computer can generate an album better than... Okay, but what is it? It's the fact that there was a, a blood sacrifice and there was a commitment and they offered their firstborn or their mother in this case, usually. So if you notice these people's mothers disappear, they die. And um, I know this because I know detectives from here, from LA, who worked on people that you would know and what was really going on there. And, uh, and, and, and finding out that their children were betting on the games that their dad was playing. And that got out and all of a sudden they're not in that sport anymore, they just retire. I'm like, well, you got a good 20 years left. No, he doesn't. And then their son's found dead. Yeah. Or daughter, what do you do? Now, this is happening in politics. It, it, it happened before your eyes, and, and I don't think anybody caught it, but you saw people shift in the last three years, and you, if you look at what happened, their children were, were killed in intersections. See, they were told, you either comply, and you throw this guy under the, the bus, sail him down the river, or else. And all of a sudden, they're, they're going against their party. Or whatever, you know, and it doesn't matter to me like that. What, uh, what I'm trying to tell you is, is spirituality is seeing and hearing. Spirituality is being able to see clearly and discerning in any situation and bringing forth righteousness and justice in that situation. So normally Jesus would bring justice to the poor he would preach to people that couldn't help themselves. He, he said the sick don't need a doctor. He's talking about the Pharisees. They were righteous. They didn't need any help. And so he said, you'll spend eternity in hell. Congratulations. You know, but I'm going to go to these people. And he would tell them to repent. But he, to the Pharisees, when they would come out, he'd say, who warned you? He was mad that somebody had warned them of the coming wrath. Are you going to repent? Like he didn't even want them to. He was so mad. But do you see that? When, he, when Jesus said these things, who warned you of the coming wrath? See, he, he went out into the fields and he preached to people that couldn't pay him back. So he didn't get any favors from the Pharisees. He didn't get invited to speak at the big churches, the temples. And um, Do you understand that? So there, there's, there, this happened with Jesus, but he was the son of God, but they didn't discern it. Okay, so being spiritual, what is really being spiritual? And who really are you? So I want to tell you what, what happened to me when I was with Jesus on that visitation was I saw that the gifts of the Spirit and the Spirit of God coming upon me or within me or any individual, it was not them. The gifts were not them the gifts of the spirit, the nine, and all of the, the uh, whatever would involve the fivefold. It was, it was put on them or in them for that particular generation for a particular task. But it was not them. See what I mean? Because Elisha, if it wasn't for what happened to him with Elijah, it would, he wouldn't be we wouldn't know him the way we know him. Okay, but he's still Elisha. Okay, he never stopped being Elisha. But he got something from Elijah that you know about. So you see that. But if it wasn't for all of the, the impartation and the handoff from God and the, the, the transference to another generation, then you wouldn't know Elisha like you do know him now, right? Elijah, you know him because of what was on him and what he did. But if that wasn't on him, he'd be just like every one of us, you, you know. Oh, that's the guy that worked at, at Wendy's, you know, or whatever. You know, in other words, the things that happen have to be separated and put to, to the display that it's God, not you. So you have to stay in the mode that you're imperfect and that 
we know in part and we see in part, like Paul said. He's talking about the gifts of the Spirit. So we're imperfect vessels who haven't reached perfection. So any one of us can be used of God and been terrible that day. The reason why you aren't is because your soul is damaged because you've damaged your intimacy with God. God hasn't left you because he can't leave you because he, he, you're his. But what happens is you become ineffective because the weight of sin in your consciousness is too hard. If there's a discrepancy, like you could spend a whole day. Now you've done this, even if you don't know it, but you felt guilty about something you didn't even do. And it, it totally wiped out your whole day. And you didn't do anything wrong. Somebody said something to you. And I'm like, you're like, whoa, you got to be kidding me. Where did that come from? I don't even know you, you know. And you try to figure it out. You spend the whole day doing that. And the whole thing is like a clay pigeon. Pull, and it's over. The clay pigeon's gone. And no birds were harmed in this advertisement. So, so why would you think... You know, like, like I remember going, I remember going over Christmas, we, we, we went clay, we went to, you know, target practice with, with shotguns and clay pigeons and stuff. It was like a golf course. So you did 18 rounds, 18 holes, you know, and everything was a different thing, you know, and uh, we didn't know what was coming, you know? So of course, Kathy beat me and then the ladies beat us, you know, and, um, and that's really weird. <laughs> We had to show her how to hold the shotgun, you know, and then she's like taking everything out. I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> and and us, us professionals, you know, that that do it all the time, we're like, oh. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, I don't like I. I can let it bother me that somebody did better than me. Like, like you could think like, okay, why did this happen? Why do people think this? Why do they say this? And the whole time, it's just to take your energy away, take your tension away, and it passes. Okay, so spirit, a spiritual person would actually be able to, to look down in their spirit and say, why are you so down, inside, you know, downtrodden inside? David said, you know, be still my soul. See, his spirit was saying to his soul, be still, like be at peace. Okay, so you're going to cause trouble just because you're, if you're being sent and not when, if you're going anywhere and you are, you are with God intimately and you have a relationship with him, well, you know, I'd be worried if the devil wasn't like mad, you know, like I'd be worried if people weren't like getting upset around being around you. I'm serious. And I'm talking about Christians being upset with you. I'm talking about people that have allowed things to get into their soul and it becomes part of their personality. Okay, so this is what Paul is talking about as far as warfare. If you look at all the scriptures, like in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, if you look at uh, Ephesians 6, if you look at the different scriptures, he's saying, he's saying that there's a spiritual entity, but he talks and he refers to, um, you know, the, the weapons of our warfare and our combat, the might through God, the pulling down strongholds. And it, it says it, it's pulling down every thought, or anything that lifts itself above the knowledge of God, every thought. Well, that's not spiritual, is it? But it is. Because essentially, the demon has to hijack you and get you to do it. He can't make you do anything. So what he does is he fills your mind to convince you of something to where you make a manifestation of something. He has to get you to do it. That's the warfare. But if you're spiritual, what you know is, is that you're just, you're just getting triple A fire. You're just going, you're too, you're just flying through it and you're getting dinged up, you know? And it's like, you're getting Swiss cheese, you know? More holes than cheese, you know? And you feel like, well, what did I do? It's like nothing. You just, you flew on the heading that you were supposed to fly on and you went through the enemy line, you know? That was part of it. Okay, so a, a, a true soldier would know this is part of it. And so you would, you know, like, like with uh, Captain Chris, he had countermeasures on his F-18. So not only was he laying a lot of pain into enemy territory, he was also able to, to prevent defensive um, measures where um, you, could, you could do amazing things with this. And, um, you know, I was privy to this because uh, one of my professors in college flew spy planes. And so 
Um, one, one day he may or may not told me some stories. I don't know. I don't remember. But the thing it was is you can, with the e-lint, e-lint systems, you can offset your signature by miles. And so he, they would actually offset. And this is like 60s technology. You imagine what they have now. But they could t- he said, it's classified. But uh, he said, it's, it's kind of out. And I go, well, it is now for sure because... I'm going to talk. You know? <laughs> no, but anyway, they can take your whole signature, radar signature, and offsets you by 20 miles. And then the, every th- every, they think you're over here. And you're like waving at them. No, we're right here, but see you later. You know, nice country. <laughs> you know? And you, you can offset, and they're actually like targeting something that's not even there. Okay, so being spiritual means that God doesn't have the limitations of the physical like you think. So that's why people accidentally get healed and delivered. And why their finances have miracles. It's not the people that think that they qualify for because they they gave a whole bunch of money or they had this person lay hands on them or they went to this school or they talked to Kevin. You know, it, it wasn't that. It was because God is God and he has a purpose with your kids. He might be blessing you because your, your, your children are praying <laughs> and you think it's you <laughs> and they're praying for mommy and daddy every night. And they're like, you know, get them, God, get them, you know, <laughs> what if what the spirit is doing in your life is leading you to confrontation? Okay, see, to me, that's a spiritual person because that's what Jesus did all the time. He went to countries where he wasn't welcome. He went to places he wasn't welcome and he didn't look for demons. When did he ever look for a demon? Everywhere he went, as soon as he got out of the boat or whatever, I mean, those demon-possessed people were right there to confront him. Everywhere he went, the Pharisees who were demon-possessed, because he said they were, would come out to confront him. But he had come to give the good news right? And heal the sick, right? And he fed them. So as Christians, we should feed people too. We should take care of people. Okay. So he was spiritual by obeying God, which meant that he was being led, which means it wasn't him. So he couldn't get credit and he didn't take credit. The son of God did not take credit for spiritual gifts or manifestations. He said, this is my father. This is a confirmation to you that I'm in the father and the father's in me. He never took it on upon himself. Okay. So that's why he never had to ask for money. There was money leaving the bag all the time. There's five finger discount, you know, with uh, Judas, but it doesn't say when anything came into the bag ever. And it never says that he took an offering. See, and I know everybody's upset with me and that's why I have to have my own ballroom and I have my own school and I have my own airplane. I have, you know, it's, it's because God will prosper a person not because they're saying, listen, this is not me. It's not me. And I'm not doing any of this because I'll, I'll be the first to tell you I'm not this good. Kathy will back me up. I'm not this good, you know. <laughs> I mean, everybody that knows me knows that I'm asking like all my staff, I'm meeting with them all the time. Do you have any, is the Lord showing you anything? You know, what have you learned? Cause they all work for big time ministers. So I ask them, am I acting like they are? Cause please let me know because their ministry has gone now. You know, I don't want to end up like that. If you ever see me acting like your previous boss, please tell me. Don't, and they go, oh no, you're like totally different. I'm like, please, if you see any, like, well, what do you think about this? Because I'm feeling this. See, I'm, I'm not claiming that I, I'm mean, of course I could do that. I could pray and fast and, and I get direction from the Lord. And, I, and of course there's times where uh, I don't ask him. I tell him, you know, we're doing this. We're going to Carlsbad and you're going to like it. You know, we're going to, I know, I know, right. <laughs> but there, there's times where I say, okay. And, um, you know, and then like, they're trying to suggest, I'm like, oh no, no, the suggestion box is taped up. We're <laughs> We're going, the Lord, thus saith the Lord, we're doing this and we're not, you know, we're not going to take an offering here. We're not going to do this. Uh, we're going to give out money here. We're going to do a flight and like we do our flights and pick up families that can't afford to come. And we just go pick them up. 